but it's okay. Um, I got a little more time to minimize what I had already because I had a lot to talk about this morning. But it gave me a little time to um, get my thoughts together, gather my thoughts, and see what God wanted me to talk about. Or he really wanted me to talk about all of it. He just gave me the proper way to talk about it. So thank God for those seven minutes. <laughs> but um, good morning. It's been break with Vanessa Dion. And every Wednesday, we check our spiritual vitals. Um, we see where we are with God. We see where we are with ourselves. Are we making sure our mental is okay? Is our heart okay? Is our spirit okay? Um, are we where God wants us to be? And, you know, thought-provoking questions within ourselves to see if, um, am I aligned with God today? How am I doing? How am I doing within myself today? Am I being who, I'm, who I can be for my family today? You know what I'm saying? Just checking our spiritual vitals and making sure that we are okay so that we can pour into others. So, um, yeah, Father God, in the name of Jesus, thank you, God, for a new day. Thank you for life. Thank you for breath. Thank you for fresh air. Thank you for being everything you are, God, so that we can be who we are. Thank you for showing us how to be so that we have an example of who to walk like, who to talk like, who to be like, and that is you, Jesus, and I thank you for that this morning. I thank you for pouring into us daily so that we can pour out into others, and I thank you for this day alone that you show up, that you showed up for us today because we can feel your presence already, God, and I thank you for that already. I thank you for that right now. Thank you, thank you, thank you, um, and God, before I ask you for anything this morning, please forgive me. Please forgive anyone listening. I speak on their behalf to ask for forgiveness for anything wrong we may have done to you, to ourselves, or to others, God. Please pour into us. Please show us the places that need more of you. Please show us the places that need more love so that we can get right, God. Maybe we just need some more love in those places. Maybe we just need to be pouring into a little more. And I ask you for that this morning, God, so that we can be the best that we can be for you and for others. And this morning, I want to pray and ask you, God, for you to remove me out the way, God, and for you to speak to your people. I pray for you to pour into me the words that I need to say so that I can bless somebody's day or somebody's whole life if they need it. Um, I pray for um, deliverance. I pray for movement. I pray for um, steps forward. I pray for anybody to come out of stagnation. I pray for power. I pray for you to just flow within this episode. In Jesus' name, I pray. And I thank you in advance, God. I thank you in advance. In Jesus' name, I pray. Amen. So good morning, y'all. Good morning, good morning. Um, every Wednesday, we read our affirmations. And an affirmation is just a positive statement that helps you overcome your negative thoughts and feelings. Um, they can help you reinforce positive thoughts and a positive attitude. So um, I do want to say that affirmations don't, um, affirmations don't replace prayer. Um, affirmations do not replace prayer. I feel like I don't say that enough. I feel like when I speak on affirmations, I just say, yeah, it, um, you know, brightens up your mood. It brightens up your attitude. It makes you feel better about yourself in life. Like, yes, they're great for your mental. They're great for your mind. They're great for your thoughts and feelings and emotions. They're good for stuff like that. Um, but it doesn't replace you having to open up and pray to God. It doesn't replace you speaking a prayer and speaking to him in Jesus' name. It doesn't, re you know, replace you sealing something with the amen, God, I trust you. You know, it doesn't replace that. Um, so, yeah, I just wanted to make that clear because I feel like I don't do that enough. I, yeah, so that's what an affirmation is. An example of an affirmation is I trust where God is taking me. You know, speaking that over your mind, because maybe you have doubtful thoughts. Maybe you're working on overthinking. Maybe you're working on trusting God. So, um, you know, affirmation can be, I trust where God is taking me. So we have our four affirmations this morning. And um, I'm going to read one, and you read the next, and then so forth and so on. And, um, yeah, so our first affirmation is, Oh, and also I want to say, like, if you want to write them down, type them in your phone, whatever, you know, whatever can help you or whatever. So, yeah, I really want to read the next so on and so forth. Okay, cool. So, we have our first affirmation is, I forgive me after God forgives me. Our second one is, I will stay true to who I am. The third one is, I will pamper my prayers. Mm -hmm. 
And the fourth one is, it ran in my family until it ran into me. So we're going to read them again. And after we say them, I want us to take a deep breath in and accept them. We're going to take a deep breath after we say these again. So I read one, you read the next, and so forth. So the first one is again, I forgive me after God forgives me. The second one is, I will stay true to who I am. The third one is, I will pamper my prayers. And the fourth one is, it ran in my family until it ran into me. Now take a deep breath in. And let it out. Okay, so... I kind of want to start with just because it's ringing in my mind of needing. I want to start with the third one first. I didn't plan to, but I want to start with this one first. Um, just because it's ringing in my ear. So just going to, you know, do that. I will pamper my prayers just because I needed another. Ex I need to understand why I wrote that again. <laughs> I get it, but I wanted to do. I don't know. It caught my attention. So I wanted to read this page out of this book I'm reading. I read it yesterday and I really, really liked it. Because when I it goes, when I read it, it kind of went opposite to what I wanted to speak on on my scripture. Um, so I just needed to see why I wrote it again. So I'm going to read this page. It says, when you pray, believe that it's going to happen. Put it in your heart next to passion next to honesty to yourself and others, next to humility with yourself and others, next to consideration for yourself and others, next to believing in yourself and others. And so that the prayer will be the perfect gift when it is granted to you. Wrap it from the beginning with a bow of hard work in the, in to, sorry, wrap it from the beginning with the bow of hard work and determination. Don't ever pray. Mm. Hmm, I kind of want to change this. Uh, if you don't do anything about it, then, so, uh, then start with your heart. Believe that you are worth the wish coming true so that you can be worthy of it. Believe that you are worthy that the prayer will come is coming true so that you can be worthy of it. Pamper your prayers. Hmm. I don't want to say pamper them, though. I'm going to take out the app. Ah, I don't know. It's crazy. Like when I'm in the middle, like I'm already here at the episode. I don't know why God wants to change it. But <laughs> um, I don't know what I want to change it to, but I think I just really wanted to read this. Um, I don't know. Y'all, I don't know. God is, is, is talking right now, literally. So I really, this is new. Like God, we ain't never did this. <laughs> okay. When you pray, believe that it's going to happen. Put it next to your heart, next to passion. I think it's just saying, like, take care. Take care of your prayers. Like, make sure that when you say them, it's still there. Like, you don't just let go of what you pray for. I think that's what I want to put emphasis on is don't let go. Uh, let go and let God pray and speak it and believe it and walk away from it. But at the same time, make sure it's not just... Um, you know what I'm saying? Like, make sure you still have faith that it's going to happen. Make sure it's still passion in your prayer. Make sure you're still, you know, it's next to, it says next to consideration for yourself and others. Like, it's still there and you still have the faith that and you believe that. Don't let it be so far that you don't even believe that God can still do it. You know, still pamper them. Make sure that you, you know what I'm saying? Like, I'm trying to get it out, but it's right there. Like, right, it says wrap it from the beginning with the bow of hard work and, de and determination. When you pray for something, make sure you actually want it. You know, God, if you're praying for, I don't know, but make sure you know you put the work in. Don't just pray for something and let it just, God, I know. You know what I'm saying? Like, oh, you're still doing your part to make it happen. You know how I always say, um, what's the saying? Um, you do it all that you can in the natural and God will do the supernatural. 
Like, not just, a, like, thinking that this is magic and God just gone boom. You get what I'm saying? It still takes for you to believe and have that faith that God will do it. You know what I mean? Pamper your prayers with faith. Pamper your prayers with passion. Pamper your prayers with hard work and determination after you pray that prayer. You know what I mean? Like, making sure that you know that God will do it. Um. Yeah. It says if you can't do anything about it, then start with your heart. Um, making sure you get what I'm saying. Like I believe that this was gonna, this is gonna happen. Start with your heart. If I can't do nothing about it, I know that it it can happen. It's next to passion in my heart because I'm passionate about this prayer. You get what I'm saying? Believe that you are worth the prayer come and choose so that you can be worthy of it. Believe in that God. I know that you can do this for me. I know that you can. Um, so that you can be worthy of it. Um, I guess it's doing the work so that you can be worthy. Um, fasting, if that's fasting, pampering your prayer with fasting, um, God, this is the work that I'm going to put in so that you can make this happen. You know what I mean? So I think that's, yeah, God, oh, I feel like, I hope I explained it. And this, I mean, I feel good about it. So, yeah, pamper your prayers, pamper your prayers with, with faith, pamper your prayers with hard work. Pamper your prayers with with really believing that God can do it for you. Yeah. That was that affirmation. Cool. Let's move forward. <laughs> so we have the first one that I read. Forget I forgive me after God forgives me. Um, I was at my friend's house yesterday and she gave me this one. And I love it and I'm grateful for it. Because self-forgiveness is so important. Because God already forgives us. In the scripture that I had... Um, for this one was first John, the first chapter, verses eight through ten. First John, the first chapter, verses eight through ten. Let's see, let's see, let's see. Let's see, let's see, let's see. I think that's at same time. I'm how which do I want to read King James? I think I want to read King James for this one. Okay, I have first John eight. Through 10. First John, the first chapter, 8 through 10. The affirmation is, I forgive me after God forgives me. Okay, it says, if we say that we have no sin, we deceive ourselves, and the truth is not in us. If we confess our sins, he is faithful and just to forgive us our sins and to cleanse us from all unrighteousness. If we say that we do not, if we say that we have not sinned, we make him a liar and his word is not in us. God knows that we're going to slip. <laughs> God knows that we are unclean. God knows in our human flesh, in our human nature and in our flesh that we are not anything as far as like we are, we're dirty. Like we sin, we do wrong, we do bad. We all do. And that's the emphasis that I want to put, that God is putting on this through me is that we all are dirty. <laughs> like literally, like he's literally telling us that we all are. And if you say that you're not, if you say you haven't sinned, if you say, if somebody is able to say, oh, I'm good, I ain't never did nothing wrong, or um, my sin, you know what I'm saying? Like, you're wrong, you're a liar. So you're, God is saying, so I'm a liar then? <laughs> so you calling me a liar then? If you say you ain't never did nothing wrong, then you calling me a liar. So I feel like this brought me comfort that if God is letting me know that I am a mess, <laughs> if God is letting me know that you have made mistakes, but then says that I forgive you, I'm faithful. Like, I'm still faithful. No matter how you are, you, it won't be grace if you was perfect, baby. <laughs> like, you know what I'm saying? Like, it wouldn't be mercy if you had it all together. Like, it's because you are unworthy is why it's grace. You aren't worthy of it. You're right. <laughs> I know you nasty. I know you is. I know you that. I know you ain't got it all together. That's why it's called grace because you're unworthy of it. <laughs> like, that's literally the point in saying that he is faithful. And just to forgive us of our sins and clean us from all righteousness. After, But it says that after we confess our sins and let God know, okay, I, I did this. I'm sorry. I apologize. I know I was wrong for this. Owning it, he forgives us. So then after that, you have to do the next step of forgiving yourself. You've already forgiven. God has forgiven you. Okay? Then you have to do the next step to say, okay. Like, I feel like it takes, like, really true True, 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 true faith that God forgives you. And I just want to reassure that. That's what I want to do is put reassurance on the fact that God really does genuinely forgive you. 
he's literally saying that nobody is clean. Nobody is worthy, really. Nobody has it all together. But if you say that, if you own up to it and say, God, I did this and I know it was wrong, then I will be faithful to you. I am faith. I am faithful, period. He's a faithful God, period. No matter what we do, no matter what we, you get what I'm saying? Doing life as far, as long as we confess to him that we are sorry and we apologize. You know what I'm saying? God, I'm sorry that I did this to you. I'm sorry I did this to them. I'm sorry I did this to myself. God, I'm sorry. And I invite you into my heart to clean me. You get what I'm saying? So, yeah, then the next step, like I said, is to really believe that he forgives you so that you can forgive yourself. I'm sorry for doing this to me. I'm sorry for doing this to that person and really, really owning that forgiveness and making it personal. You get what I'm saying? Personal to you. So, yeah, um, that's that. That's that affirmation. And then we have our next affirmation that says, I will stay true to who I am. I will stay true to who I am. Um, what I got from, what I wanted to emphasize with this affirmation, I will stay true to who I am. Um, who we are is not dictated by how other people view us. How other people see us does not dictate who we are. Um, people have the luxury, the great luxury of free will. <laughs> free thoughts, a free opinion, a free mind. God has blessed us with a free body and a free mind and free will. God has, God has granted us that. Um, therefore, if someone wants to genuinely believe that you are a bad person, they will do that. Like, they will make up so much in their head or judge you off one thing that you did and make that your whole character. But that's their mind. That's what they are choosing to do. That does not dictate who you are, though, because of somebody else's perception of you. You get what I'm saying? Like somebody else's perception has nothing to do with who you are as a person because people have free will to think whatever they want to think. People have free will to, to be whoever. You know what I'm saying? We have free will. There's nothing that we can do to make anybody change their mind. Like that is crazy to think that you can continue to pour and do more and, and and beg and plead and and defend yourself you think that you can literally make somebody change their mind you're crazy you're outrageous to put that much energy into another person that's choosing to see you like that literally there's nothing you can do because we have free will we have free will we have free will we have free will okay so who you are is not dictated by how other people view you because that's what they are choosing to do. They're basing, what, even if you, like I said, you could have done something wrong for sure. I'm not saying that, oh, don't take accountability for what you've done. No, because you could have done something wrong. But somebody is choosing to base your entire character on that. And that's something that they're choosing to do is all I'm saying. So, yeah, like, um, you can't keep pouring into somebody and pour more and more and more and more. And some people, um, really it makes them like, not like you more just have to strength them. Now you're doing too much. Like <laughs> if you keep pouring and pouring and pouring and pouring to some people, it really makes them not like you even more. Like it, all I'm saying is it's free will and you can't control somebody's mind. So, um, I'm not saying this to say, like I said, um, stay true to who you are. Just stay true to you. Be confident in who you are and what you do. Be confident in who you are and what you you do be confident pour from the best place in your heart from that best side like if, if your right side a little though that part of your heart a little better than the left the heart the left side been hurt a little bit the left side got trauma the left side got a little band-aid on it cool pour from the right <laughs> pour from the right side of your heart you know what i'm saying like the left side may not have it all together the left side may be you know a little damaged but pour from the best side of your heart okay and i had this the book i'm reading also said this be confident in your intentions and keep your eyes ahead instead of wasting time on those who want to drag you back. Be confident in your intentions and keep your eyes ahead instead of wasting your time on those who want to drag you back. Um, ahead. I got two different things just now from this. Um, at first I had keep your eyes ahead. I put emphasis on ahead 
um, because, yeah, keep your eyes forward. People are going to want to bring you back to a mistake you made, bring you back. To, that's why it also gave me a mistake because it said be confident in your intentions because we have good intentions a lot of times. Most times when we, you know, sometimes we make a mistake and it may not be the best, but be confident in your intentions and keep your eyes ahead instead of wasting your time on those who want to drag you back because we're going to make mistakes. That's inevitable. We're going to slip up. We're going. That's why I said some people will base you off of one, a mistake that you made. They base your whole character off of that. But it's I, I'm literally stay ahead, though. Stay focused on who you're becoming. Stay focused on, well, I, I apologize for that. And that's all I can do. I apologize for hurting them like that. And I, I you know, I, I wrote my wrongs. I, I confess to God. I did this and that. What more do they want from me? Some people just love to boost their own ego of you feeling bad and begging to be the, be cool with them again. Some people love it when, when you, you know what I'm saying? Like, I'm sorry, I'm sorry, I'll, I'll give you this, I'll give you this gift, I'll, you know what I'm saying? For whatever reason, you know what I'm saying? All I'm saying is stay focused on the, on the ahead, be confident in your intentions, and if you slip up, say I'm sorry, apologize, you know, make your wrongs right with people, and apologize to God, confess your sins, but keep moving forward some people want to drag you back to a mistake don't allow them stay true to who you are and who god is pushing you to be stay true to that person okay stay true to that person um be good to who be 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 who you are um do your good deeds spread love build connections give encouraging words um the world needs more of you the world needs more of who you are um, so don't quench your spirit. Don't quench God's spirit moving through you because of other people's battles within themselves. Some people are battling things within themselves. And now you're uh, just stay true to you. OK, don't quench God's spirit moving through you because you want to stoop down. I don't want to say stoop down, but don't quench God's spirit moving through you because just because of other people's battle within themselves. Some people are battling something within yourself and now you're. You're um what's the what is it called? People be I'm a, I'm a match energy. I'm a um I'm a do them how they doing me. Like you know what I'm saying? Like why put all that extra energy when you can just stay true to you and whatever they have going on within them? Like I said, continue to spread love. Continue to give encouraging words. Continue to do your good deeds and keep it pushing. Don't do not alter um your blessings. Do not waste your time. Going back to people that want to drag you down. Keep pushing. Keep forward and stay true to who you are. So, yeah. And we're going to keep going. So, we have our fourth affirmation, the last one. It says, it ran in my family until it ran into me. And my friend posted this yesterday on her story. So, it ran in my family until it ran into me. And it reminded me of my mama saying, each generation should get better and better. Each generation should get better and better. If you don't like it, if you ain't like it when your parents did it, if it made you feel this way when your parents did this or whatever, um, try your best to do better moving forward. And it doesn't have to be with, um, oh, I'm going to do better with my kids. Do better as a person, not just a parent. Like, oh, I'm going to be a better parent than my parent was. No, be a better person because it goes into the person. You know what I'm saying? Like, so be a better person. If you felt that way when your parents did it, just don't do that as a person. You know what I'm saying? As a human being, don't do it. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? But we're specific. It ran, into, it ran in my family until it ran into me. Keeping it on topic, though. Um, be a better parent. Be a better auntie. Be a better uncle. Be a better cousin. Be a better grandma. Be a better granddaddy. Um, be a better mama. Be a better daddy. Be a better whatever. You know what I'm saying? Be better. Do better. Um, and for the parents listening... It's never too late um, to get right. It's never too late to make wrongs right. It's never too late, you know. Um, there could be built up hurt in your child um, that you that you don't even know about, that the child doesn't know about, that whoever, you know what I'm saying, you may not know that there's that built up hurt there, but you just saying, hey, um, like you come to a realization maybe or a place where, dang, I could have done better um, in this area. Um, there's nothing wrong with opening up and apologizing to your child. There's nothing wrong with opening up and being like, hey, I know that um, <clears throat> I wasn't the best. And I remember a time where, you know, da 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 Because you never know. That child could remember that and just kind of like, you know, you kind of got to swallow stuff. You do. You kind of have to forgive your parent for only doing what they knew. You kind of have to. But it, it helps. It helps for you to be like, hey, um, 
I know I could have done better here, you know, da, 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 da. So that's for the parents, you know, listening that maybe you've come to realizations of I could have done better in this area. Tell your child, like tell them that that really does help. I'm telling you, it really does. Um, that can really push them forward in their own healing process. And I do want to speak to the children, not necessarily children as in, um, you know, 10 year old, whatever, whatever, but, you know, young adults, adults, even I'm just saying, period, if you are a child. Well, we all are children. We all have parents. So I'm speaking to everybody. <laughs> really, I'm speaking to everybody. So for the ones that um, may not ever get that apology or that explanation, um, I just want to encourage you that, you know, people can only do give you, people can't give you what they don't have. So like maybe your parent didn't have that growing up. Maybe your parent um, didn't get, you know what I'm saying? Like the people can only give you, what they have, they can't give you what they don't have. You get what I'm saying? So I just want to kind of like just just talk to that place maybe in your heart that um, won't get that explanation or that apology from a parent. Um, like I said, every generation should get better and better. So when you pour into your kids, when you have children, you know what I'm saying? Like don't allow it to um, um, – Travel. Don't allow it to keep going. What's the affirmation? I, it ran in my family until it ran into me. Um, make sure you break it. Call it out to God. Pray on it. Prayer. Um, saying, God, um, you know, this, whatever this, the thing is, this stops with me, God. I pray and I speak that over my life. I speak that over my family. He's like that. This in specific stops with me, God. And, and, and being, you know, you know what I'm saying? Prayer and, um, yeah, fast on it. That's what I've, I've been, my mom's been, well, my family has been big on lately is fasting. And she, um, some things she, she, anyway, yeah, I'm going to, I ain't going to get into a new topic, but yeah. What's the affirmation again? It ran in my family until it ran into me. Call out things to God, pray on them, and just command that they will stop with me. Be intentional that it will stop with me. And when you see signs of it, nip it. If you see signs of it, make sure it does stop. If you see signs of it, um, I, I rebuke it. When you see signs of it, uh-uh, we ain't doing that. If you see signs of it, fix it if you can. So, yeah, that's that affirmation. And I'm going to move forward. We got, um, I got a quote, and I'm going to read our scripture. And we're done, y'all. So, my quote, I'm going to read. Okay, I was on a call with, we have a Bible study group, so. Shout out to my friend, Chris, for starting this. It's really powerful. Um, and yesterday, I had, um, we was talking about, just, you know, talking or whatever and having a conversation. And it was something that God had gave me to say. And, you know, like, when you just talking and God pouring to you while you talking, and it's like, oh, that's good. It's like, I got to write it down. You know what I'm saying? So I wrote this down when God was just flowing on the call and just, you know, there in the room. So it says, you're not starting over. When you reach a new level, you are a beginner at that new level. I'm going to say it again. You're not starting. It's not, okay, I'm going to say it's not that you're starting over. It's not that you are starting over. When you reach that new level, you are a beginner at that new level. So it goes to feelings of like, why am I back at, feeling like, dang, I came so far, but why am I back at square one? I just I overcame that situation, but why does it feel like I'm back at square one? You get what I'm saying? Like, it's, the analogy that just popped in my head was like a mountain. You climb over a mountain, you get to the end. Yes, I'm good. You're walking on land. You're good. You get to a new mountain. Baby, you're at the bottom of the mountain. You got to you gotta climb again. You know what I'm saying? Like, you're back at the bottom of the mountain. So, like, I like that just feeds into the feeling of why am I back at square one? I've come so far. But why do I feel like I got nowhere? You got over that last level. Cool. Cool. Now level two. <laughs> you got it. Now you're a beginner at level two. You know what I'm saying? Like, just like in a game, you have easy, medium, and hard. You get over easy. Cool. You get over medium. Cool. When you get to that next level, you know what I'm saying? Like, it's going to require you to pull out that faith you just built. It's going to require you to pull out that obedience that you've been working on. It's going to require you to, you know what I'm saying? You got your little tools that you use, your little tools that you battle with. You know what I'm saying? Like, it's going to require you to, you know, use the things that you've been um, collecting this whole time. You get what I'm saying? So, um, yeah, or even, like, I thought about 
Um, oh, yeah, we still have things to learn, and we always will. Life is forever a realm of learning. We're in a realm of forever teaching. We're in a realm of forever having to learn. And as we elevate, um, like just like with school, you got elementary versus middle school. You got middle school versus high school. You got high school versus college. You get what I'm saying? Like every level, you're going to feel like a beginner. So, um, yeah, that was the, yeah, you'll never, you'll never know it all. You'll never know it all, ever. And if you ever think that you know it all, God going to bring you back to level one. Let me humble you real quick because you don't know nothing. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Now you're back at level one. Since you think that you want level in infinite, infinity, you're done. Okay, let me bring you back. He may not bring you back to level one, but you know what I'm saying? Like, let me bring you down a couple notches because I got to let you know that, baby, you got some more stuff to learn. Um, He's going to bring you right back to that classroom. <laughs> so, yeah, um, you're not starting over. Um... Yeah, we're not starting over. It's not that we're starting over. When we reach a new level, we're just a beginner at that new level. Um, so, yeah, just use the obedience. Use the patience. Use the faith and everything that you've been building up through those other levels. Use them to get through this one. You'll see the other side. You'll see the other side of that mountain. You'll see the other side of that situation. You got to get through it. You got to get over that mountain. You got to get through this level. So, yeah. Yeah, yeah, and then we have our scripture for today. I'm going to read Matthew 6. I was in Matthew 6 yesterday, heavy, and um, God gave me a new revelation this morning. The part that it really had me yesterday ain't even the part that he gave me to speak on this morning. He changed it. That's why I said, like, I'm glad for those few minutes that um, we had to get everything together for the call because it God switched, switched this little part up on me, but it's okay. Um, because I had, like I said, I had a lot to talk about. I was going to talk about a lot, but he put it all together into one. So I'm grateful for that. Okay. We have Matthew six and we're going to start at verse 25. We're going to start at Matthew six. I mean, that we're going to go to Matthew six and start at verse 25. I have the new international readers version of this scripture. Um, I tell you, do not worry. Don't worry about your life and what you will eat or drink. Don't worry about your body and what you will wear. Isn't there more to life than eating? Aren't there more important things for the body than clothes? Look at the birds of the air. They don't plant or gather crops. They don't put away crops in storerooms. But your father who is in heaven feeds them. Aren't you worth much more than they are? Can you add even one hour to your life by worrying? I'm going to say that one one more time. Can you add even one hour to your life? By worrying. What's worrying going to do? Okay, let's keep going. And why do you worry about clothes? See how the wildflowers grow? They don't work or make clothing. But here is what I tell you. Not even Solomon in all his royal robes was dressed like one of these flowers. If that is how God dresses the wild grass, grass, won't he dress you even better? Your faith is so small. After all, the grass is here only today. Tomorrow it is thrown into the fire. I want to pause real quick. Because God, not, I can't even get through it, right, even reading it right now. I could not get through it this morning. Y'all, I just love, y'all know, well, if you don't know, I love nature. So any type of nature sermon, any type of nature word or scripture, I love it. It's literally saying, God saying that if God if that is how God dresses the wild grass, if God dresses the grass with flowers, if God dresses the grass with flowers, why do, don't do you think that he'll take care of you? Dressing, I never even thought about that. Like him dressing the, fla, the, the grass with flowers, like, and this is in the Bible, like, yes! Like, you better teach, you better preach, you better say that. Like, why do you think he won't take care of you if he's dressing the grass with flowers? Like, and it says, after all, the grass is here only today. Tomorrow it is thrown into the fire. Don't worry about tomorrow. Like, today it's beautiful. Today the grass looks great. Today the grass is amazing, and that's how we should be. Today, I feel good. Today, I feel great. Today, God took care of everything I needed today. Today, God supplied all my needs. So let me not worry about tomorrow. Let me not even think about tomorrow yet. So let's keep going. Let's keep going. So don't worry. Don't say, what will I eat or what will I drink or what will I wear? People who are ungodly run after those things. 
your father who is in heaven knows that you need them. Okay. He knows you need them, but put God's kingdom first, do what he wants you to do. Then all those things will also be given to you. Don't worry about tomorrow. Tomorrow will worry about itself. Each day has enough trouble of its own. I got too much going on today for me, be, for me to be worried about tomorrow. And even if I want to worry about tomorrow, I got to seal it with God going to take care of me. If I am going to worry about tomorrow, no, you don't worry. Because what it say? What it say? Can you, can you add even one hour to your life by worrying? What is worrying going to do? Nothing. Worrying ain't going to do nothing. Okay. So, yeah, we just got to trust him, okay? We just got to trust God. And the thing, one of the things I wanted to include in, like, I was trying to figure out how I'm going to include this. Me and my mama was talking this week. And it's like when you walk by faith and vision and what God, only what God is giving you, those breadcrumbs God is giving you, it's like God is in your ear as you step, though. Like, he's, and I say ear because you can't see him. <laughs> it's faith y'all but we can't see him but god is in our ear as we step go left all right go hang that right hang that right all right step right here hold on hold on hold on it's a hurdle jump a little bit you know what i'm saying like god right there in your ear if you're open and willing to hear him he's right there in your ear telling you where to step in that space and that's how we have to that's what i mean by that's what i'm uh, by daily like daily, God, give me my daily bread. God, give me this da my daily bread that I need for today. God, please give me that. And that's how we should pray. And that, that's something that had me up here. What verse was that? When I was teaching us how to pray. Um, 11, give us today our daily bread. God, give me what I need for right now. Today, my daily bread as I walk. I need that. God, please grant me that. You get what I'm saying? Like, that's how we should pray is, God, give me what I need for today. You get what I'm saying? So, yeah, don't worry. I was still stuck on the flowers and the grass. If God is going to clothe the grass with some, some nice flowers, you don't think that he's going to give you clothes and food and shelter and what you, you know what I'm saying, what you need? He got you. Just seek him first. What does it say? Put God's kingdom first, though, and do it. Do what he wants you to do. Then all those things will be given to you. Everything that you need will be supplied. Put him first. Keep him first. And look to him and listen to him when he in that ear. As you step, he's there. Be calm enough to hear him. Be in a place where he is so that you can hear from him. So, yeah, y'all. That's today's episode. I love y'all. I pray that we soak in self-love and awareness. And I pray that we get closer to God every single day and allow him to pour into us. Thank you for listening. Follow Vent Break on Instagram for a spiritual vitamin, V-E-N-T-B-R-E-A-K. And um, we are on YouTube. I post all of our um, episodes on YouTube, too, every single Wednesday. So, yeah, um, I love y'all. My family also has a segment on Chaos Block Talk Radio, 7 p.m. on Thursdays. We be talking and teaching and spreading love and, yeah, doing what God be telling us to do and stuff. So, yeah, love y'all. Make today a great day.